Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Uh, currently as it stands, I had to get a refund from the soldering and the rework station because it's just taken way too long. And therefore in the meantime, while I'm looking for a replacement one to purchase, I am just going to potentially stick to NGFW and firewall videos and tutorials until I can afford a new soldering station and I can find one to purchase. In the meantime, um, I have seen a lot of interest get expressed to continue the Arista firewall tutorials and today we are going to perform a little bit of uh, deeper diving into Arista, how to configure it, Starting from the last video that I made on the subject, I actually had to rewatch it so that I can remember where I left off. I did go a little bit into DNS, which it's still viable, it still works, but we're going to take a step back and we're going to um, go off of the video where we just had finished installing it. And after the familiarization of the menu, and we're going to uh, we're going to work on managing interfaces, creating, deleting an interface, managing, creating, and deleting VLANs, and assigning IPs to those uh, interfaces and VLANs. <clears throat> I will be working directly off of the appliance itself. So we're going to localhost, and uh, I think this is the password. Yeah, that is the password. Okay, fantastic. All right, so once you have logged in initially to your Arista firewall, we are going to go under the config menu and in the network. Right after setup, your Arista firewall is going to try its best to detect which uh, network interface is going to be labeled as a local area network and which interface is going to be labeled as a wide area network addressing it as internal and external respectively so <clears throat> it goes off of uh, when i read the documentation uh under device depending on how it recognizes devices is going to go with ethernet zero one two three uh four and so forth it's based off of uh debian linux so depending on how uh your cards get recognized in debian linux it's how it's going to ma get mapped here now if this is not a sa satisfactory um identification you can always click on the remap interfaces button and you can uh you can remap how they are seen and put it to your liking or to your desire now that being said for the moment we have it the way that we want it so <clears throat> because uh actually it's going to be very easy to add an additional interface i just need to power it down and power it back on but that's no problem so let me do that real quick and i'll be right back we are now finding ourselves in a situation where we have more than two interfaces and some of those interfaces are not configured. So let's go ahead and configure one. Once you map what your interface that's identified into the firewall is onto your physical appliance, you know um, how to deal with it. So just for um, the sake of this tutorial, let's select uh, interface number three and we are going to click on that little pencil right over here under the edit tab we are going to change the radio button from disabled to addressed and we are going to do a little bit of configuration now because this is going to be a local interface we're just going to add a address and a mask so let's say 172.16.1.1 one one with a net mask of however big we want this network to be. And then we're going to hop over to the DHCP configuration and we're going to enable DHCP server 
starting from 172.16.1.100 to 172.16.1.150. Under least duration, uh, sorry, I need a calculator for this. We are going to make it last four hours. So 60 seconds times 60 for one hour times four, 14,440, 14,440, right? That's oh, 4,400. Okay, and that's going to be the duration of our lease. And that's it. We're not going to select is one interface because this is not going to be an outside interface. This is going to be an inside interface. And we're going to click on done. Once that is done, and we see the changes over here, we are going to click on the save button down in the lower right corner. And we're going to click save. And we're going to wait until the interface gets back up to signify that the changes have been made. And that's how you deal with physical interfaces. If you need to remove the details and disable an interface, all you need to do is just come into the uh, little pencil, click on it. It'll bring up the edit interface uh, window and just remove the details. The net mask, you can't really get rid of, so just leave it as a 32. Get rid of the DHCP, and done. And done. Once that's done, click on Save. And there you go. VLANs is where it gets kind of interesting. Uh, they have two different ways of handling both uh, tagged and untagged VLAN traffic. So how would you, in this scenario, um, you're probably wondering, how am I going to handle untagged VLAN traffic? Well, they're just dealing it as a separate subnet that's going to be manually managed. Allow me to explain. So this is our local area network interface, and we want to add an additional VLAN that's going to be untagged. How do we do that? The first way to do it is we're going to click on edit, and we're going to add an alias. So you click on the add under IPv4 alias, and you just add the new subnet. And you click done, and that's it. Now you can manually manage a untagged VLAN that's going to be under the 192.168.5.x slash 24 subnet. The second way to manage um, untagged VLANs is you have to go to the routes section and then you're just going to add a static route. So routes 5x VLAN, whoops, via, I guess, uh, LAN interface. And the network is going to be 192.168.5.0, prefix is 24. And next hop is going to be local on internal. And you click on done and save and that's it now how do we verify that i have downloaded and installed windows 11 in a vm uh, simply because it's a little easier to manage with the with uh just a networking interface but windows or sorry linux would work just as fine so let's go ahead and assign manually a IP into the new subnet, sorry, into the new subnet and verify our network connectivity. So we said that it's 5.x, so 192.168.5. You know, just for to make it interesting, 50. 
slash 24 and then the gateway is going to be 5.1 and the dns address is going to be 5.1 as well so let's go ahead and click on ok and we're going to click on ok if everything works okay let's just go ahead and get rid of all of these we should see okay hold on just a sec because okay that's fine yeah And then, uh, thing two one. one. Okay, hold on. So that's what it says according to the documentation. Where did we, uh, where did we leave off? Okay, just a second, I have to log back in. So, it cannot, uh, currently, we have no network access, and that's fine. Let's, uh, let's see if we can amend that. Now keep in mind, this is all regarding, uh, or sorry, all um, all to do with untagged uh, frames for now. When we get into the uh, tagged frames, it gets a little bit, uh, it gets even more interesting. But for now, let's see if we can uh, if we can fix this. Oh, it didn't take. Interesting. Okay, so one nine two one six eight five. Oops. 5.1 done let's go back into all right look at that it's responding now we have internet fantastic and that is just on an untagged interface now let's try the second way with uh with a route so we're just going to delete the alias and now we're going to create a route we're going to verify that we're going to lose network connectivity uh okay there we go we have lost connectivity routes static uh routes 5x vlan on LAN interface 192 5.0. Next hop is going to be local on internal. Done and save. So now, as soon as this takes into effect, we should have response. Or maybe we're not going to have response, but do we have internet? Hmm. 
Maybe I am is an is an IP. Okay, hold on. So one nine two one six eight two dot one. Maybe like that. It's going to take it. interesting okay so it's possible that i might not be doing it wrong which is absolutely normal uh let's see what the ip table says <clears throat> let's just return it uh, as it was on the local interface and please note i still haven't changed the details and we're still trying to access reddit okay so Interesting. So, according to their documentation, this should be working. And, uh, can we ping No, we cannot. Okay. Interesting. Okay. So, I just, I'm gonna have to do a little bit of digging deeper into that and figure what it is so i'll update uh i'll update you guys in uh in a future video uh regarding that but for now just know that aliasing works for sure okay we are going to go back that the next uh thing that we are going to be dealing with is we're going to be dealing with uh, tagged interface or sorry tagged uh, VLAN frames and how do we do that so tagged um, Ethernet frames you need to create a VLAN interface because you need to tell your network interface card that you're expecting something that's identified a little different than your regular frame so let's go ahead and add a tag VLAN interface by clicking on the plus up here and uh, VLAN 5 let's call it that just because we're going to keep it simple and we are going to VLAN 5 192.168.5.1 with a net mask of 24 we're not going to be adding any 192.168.5.50.192.68.5.100.14.400 and we're going to click on done and we're going to click on save now we have a virtual LAN that's expecting frames with the tag 5 onto our internal onto this same network interface card so let's go back into the virtual machine and we're going to put everything back onto dhcp so that oops sorry hold on we're going to put everything back onto dhcp so that we can make sure that it's going to deal with the firewall directly And I know, I know you're seeing internet right now, and it's just the untagged frames, okay? That's all that it is. You see, it's 1.1. One one. Um, however, we want to see the um, VLAN. We want to see the tagged interface. So, 
I'm going to configure under advanced. Where is VLAN ID? Let's give it a VLAN of five. And look at that. We have immediately picked up a VLAN 5. And if we come over here, we can confirm that because the IP that got picked up by the DHCP server was assigned immediately to the uh, Proxmox virtual machine. And of course, so to delete it, all you have to do is click on the little trash can over here is going to delete the entry and make sure that you click on save in the arista documentation there is another uh way where they mention something to do with the static route i have to do a little bit more digging into that and i will get back to you on that because i am also interested to know whether i am the one who's doing it wrong or maybe there's a little bit more involvement to it uh but it will be a follow-up video as for now uh this has been a quick overview of local interfaces and tagged and untagged virtual lands thank you very much for watching please uh continue contributing by watching commenting liking subscribing whatever have you it helps out the channel immensely and i will see you all in the next one.